Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're back dealing with the pond again and today's adventure is going to be to filter it in some way. And that's going to use this. So as predicted by me, it has gone green. It's gone green and scummy, so we had to get something to move the water around. So first, my good lady wife and I, we bought a couple of these floating boundary things and they did do a decent job, but they also did what I thought they would do which is float away to the side and start pumping all the water out of the pond, which is not what you want really. Um, but it has stopped the water from stagnating a little bit, but it's not quite good enough. And if we are ever going to have fish in here, which we do want to get some fish in here eventually, we're going to have to have a better filter option. And I like a DIY project, so this is what we're going to use. The main challenge I would set was to get something that was aesthetically pleasing and didn't draw any power. So we'll deal with the first point first. Aesthetically pleasing is we've got this, an old whiskey barrel, it's actually a Jim Beam barrel. Um, we've got the full barrel, got it cut at three quarters. And I'm going to make a bog filter or a wetland filter, sometimes they're called. Essentially, we're going to fill this with rocks, gravel, uh, and filter the water through it and back into the pond. So we're going to have three holes that I need to cut in the barrel. One to send water back to the pump, which we're going to do down here a kind of waterfall-y style. One to take water in from the pump, from a pump in the, the water, and one as a purge for when I want to clear this out. So let's drill some holes. So that's the holes drilled and everything dry fit. So that's the overflow back into the pond. So if I try and explain this to you. On this side, this is the waste valve, the purge valve. So it's just sitting there at the moment and that's the, the hose will attach to that from the pump in the pond. So water will come in here, flow out here. That will have a tap on it, so it'll be closed normally. So it will flow out here and rise all the way up, all the way up till it meets this and then go back down this hole and back into the pond. And then in here we have our filter media, which is just going to be rocks and I'll go from big rocks at the bottom to create some voids so as I can collect all the gunk that will inevitably there that can go out through the purge. Rocks smaller and smaller and smaller to gravel, gravel at the top, then we can plant that and it can be a bog and it can even hang down over the side and get some plants around here, some plants over here to hide all this kind of stuff. That's the general idea, so I'll get all this set then we'll get the pump out, we'll get some stuff in here. So while this is all proof of concept stuff, this is the pump I'm going to use. It's just an old pond pump that I happen to have. We'll get some, get this in this end of the pond and then return the water back into that end of the pond. So we're going to set it up dry, um, dry. I'm going to set it up without the filter media just to check flow rates and everything works as expected. But yeah, basically just get a hose on this and drop it in. Obviously I can tidy this all the way and hide bits and paint it and plant around it, but for now, for the test, it'll do. There's my ever-loving happy wife helping with the project. Let's see if any water comes in. And it does. So, in theory we're there, um, the barrel is obviously an old barrel, so it needs to be weathered before it will hold water properly, so it's leaking a little bit, so we need to wait for the wood to expand there. But in general, it is returning water to the pond. Just need to fill a few gaps, maybe with some expanding foam, just making sure we're not losing any water back that way. But yeah, proof of concept wise, that works. So the general premise for this is I don't want a massive flow rate. So the pump that I'm using isn't rated for a pond this size. It is an all-in-one uh, all pump 
with UV and all that good stuff, but it's just moving a bit of water for me. Any pump that would do that would be happy with it. Um, I just want a gentle-ish, trickle-ish bit of noise, bit of water movement. The bog filters work better when you're a little bit slower. You don't really want to pump massive volumes of water through. Yeah, that's the truth. That should do the job nicely. So that's it doing the filtering business, uh, it ticks all the boxes, we just need to leave that for a few more days so as it expands and seals itself, but it's doing what we wanted to do. So I'll let it do that and then I'll fill it up with the filter media and that'll be challenge one complete. Challenge two was to make this not cost money, so we do not want to pay for this on an ongoing basis, which means we have to come up with another solution. So I'm doing an experiment. This is a big solar panel. And I'm going to power this pond pump with harness the power of the sun. So we need four things. We need a solar panel, which we've got. We need a solar charge controller. We need a battery. We don't need a battery, but I'm going to use a battery. And we need an inverter, which is one of these things with the plug on the end. So basically what happens is solar panel goes into the charge controller, which controls the load, which then charges a battery and a battery is also connected to the inverter which takes your DC current and changes it to AC. Now I've probably mashed all that up together. If you want to figure out how to do this, go and watch 100 YouTube videos like I did. But basically this is going to let me use the sun to power something. Um, very experimental, I'm just seeing how this all works, but I have plans to expand all this. So this is all very basic, base level stuff, um, which can be scaled up and scaled out. Um, we've got 100 watts for the solar panel, we've got a battery that's 8 amp hours, we've got a 300 watt inverter which peaks to 600 watts but we're going to run a pump which is about 30 watts. So the system as it comprises is obviously a solar panel which that connects to a charge controller that's in charge of controlling the charge making sure it's not overpowering the battery or anything. Um, it's important to say that even though this is a basic system, I've used quite the, the lower end of the market, all the necessary protections are in place, fuses, overload, short protection, all that kind of stuff. That goes to the charge controller to the battery, which then powers, sends power to the inverter, which then powers your thing. So the inverter is in charge of converting DC current to AC current, so you can power your pump in this case. I had some questions or compromises to make. I had to decide how I wanted to run this. In the end, I've gone with a 100 watt solar panel, an 8 amp hour lithium iron battery. Sometimes they're called um, life batteries or leisure batteries. Sometimes you see them. The reason I chose that over a car battery or a lead acid battery or any other type of battery is these are really good for uh, deep cycle use, really quick for recharge. Um, and they should last a long time, really light and small as well, so that was quite useful. So that was my first compromise, I don't have a system that can provide power 24 hours a day. If I wanted to do that, I would the battery, which is the biggest expense, would need to be scaled up a lot. I'd probably need something like a 100 amp hour battery, which is going to add another kind of 300, 400 quid to the cost. Um, but for the experiment, for now, it's fine, it will power my system during the day and the battery is filling the role of cloud cover. When the clouds come in, the wattage from the solar panel drops dramatically, but the battery picks up that until the sun comes back out and that charges the battery again. So it's really good for giving me the continuous supply during the day. It, is, it will give me something like three hours worth of power when there's no solar power coming in, so I can run the pump for a while. But that's one of the compromises. I have to go in, I have to turn the system on, and I have to turn the system off. I can automate that, but that's one of the things I'll have to do for now. Um, to upgrade that to something like a 100 amp hour battery, I would then have to also upgrade the solar panels, because 100 watts isn't going to charge a 100 amp hour battery in a day. So I'd probably need 200 watt panels, or three 100 watt panels. Um, which again would add a little bit more cost and it's whether it's worth the time and investment and this is just an experiment to make sure these things work for me at the moment. 
the more astute of you will be wondering, well, how much does it cost to run off mains a 30 watt uh, pump? And yes, it is going to take me a year and a half, two years to recoup my investment, but this system should last for at least 10 years. So I will get my money back eventually. And the more things I power off this, so I'm drawing 100 watts from the solar panel. If I, the more, the closer I get to 100 watts of usage, the shorter my return on investment window. So if I decide to add things like air pumps or UV filters and that type of thing, and boost the power draw a little bit, then my return on investment gets shorter and shorter. And again, this is just an experiment to see how well it works. And it's completely expandable. I can build bigger and add more. So I've built this little box out of scraps of wood just to mock up where I might put a final version of build something a bit nicer than this to hold it all together. But it's been running for about a week now so far and it's doing exactly what I expected to do. So it is in fact a success. It is running my pond and it's not costing me anything to run it. Obviously there's the upfront investment. Then I wouldn't get a clickbaity title out of it, would I? Um, <laughs> compromise of not running it during the night. I don't think that's going to affect me it's not going to be a koi pond it's not it should be okay with minimal filtration i'm not going to lose any beneficial bacteria overnight or anything like that so we've got the lines from the solar panel coming in here then it goes to the battery and then from the battery to the inverter and then there's a plug on the end of the inverter which is plugged into the pump so i can see you can monitor everything spend a little bit more money you can get these connected via wi-fi or bluetooth so you can run it all from your phone but it's doing what I wanted to do. So there you go, it's only been running about a week and it's already much clearer. Um, it seems to be doing everything I want, so if you want to know how well this goes when it's not quite as sunny as this, if you want to see how it lasts over winter and things like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, follow along for more updates, uh, and then come back when we add some fish. But for now, that'll do. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Bye!